Good, huh? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to City of Rockport Council meeting. This is a regular City Council meeting, September 24th. I ask you to stand with us as we do Pledge of Allegiance, led by Councilman Anderson. I pledge allegiance to Thank you. Establish the presence of quorum. We'll have a roll call. Ward one. Here. Ward two. Here. Ward three. Here. Ward four. Here. Mayor here. We do have a quorum present. First item on the agenda. We've got a presentation to make, kind of, sort of, but the the. Pre presentee cannot take it home with him today because it hadn't been uniformly signed. I have a proclamation I want to read about one of our folks that are visiting here with us today in an official capacity for the last time. We have a joint pro proclamation been, putting, been put together, whereas Mike Probst has dedicated 40 years of exemplary service to the Rockport Fulton Ranches County community as the esteemed editor and publisher of the Rockport Pilot newspaper. And whereas under his leadership, Rockport Pilot has become a trusted source of news, information, and community stories reflecting the heart and spirit of our community and its residents. And whereas Mike Probst has demonstrated unwavering commitment to journalistic integrity, ensuring that the Rockport Pilot upheld the highest standards of reporting. And whereas his visionary guidance and editorial acumen has helped Rockport Pilot navigate the challenges of a rapidly changing media landscape, ensuring its continued relevance and impact in the digital age. And whereas throughout his tenure, Mike Probst has not only chronicled the history and growth of Rockport, Fulton, and Aranges County, but also has been an active and passionate advocate for the community, contributing to its development and well-being in countless ways and whereas his retirement marks the conclusion of a distinguished career that has left an indelible mark on the field and journalism and the community at large. And I'll scoot over to the other one over here because if I open this up and it falls out, I'll never get it back in. And finally, whereas the citizens of Rockport, Fulton and Aranges County wish to express their deep appreciation for his years of service, leadership, and dedication to, ce to celebrate the legacy he leaves behind. Now, therefore, we jointly do hereby proclaim Monday, September the 30th, 2024, is Mike Probst Day in Rockport, Texas, and urge all citizens to join in recognizing and honoring the significant contributions of Mike Probst to our community in witness where we have hereunto set the seal of the city of Rockport, town of Fulton, and the county of Oran is to be affixed this month of September 2024. And you can't take this home with you yet, but if any of you would like to take a picture of us holding it up there, we can get a picture and you can get it after it's signed by everybody else. Mike. Next on the agenda is citizens to be heard. I don't have any forms. We didn't get in one from anyone. Well, that was easy. All right. Next is the consent agenda. The following items may be acted upon in a single motion. No separate discussion or action 
on any of these items will be heard or held unless pull at the request of a member of the city council. Anyone wish to remove either one of those items? Can if I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? Have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Have a motion and a second. Any further question? Call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. <coughs> Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. Ordinances, resolutions, and public hearing request to amend the official zoning map by rezoning 1306 Smokehouse Road. Ms. Dietrich. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Yes, I'm needing um, a property rezoned so I can put a mobile home next to my parents' um, house. They are elderly and disabled and they need somebody next to them. Okay. All right. We will hold the public hearing. If anyone is here to address this issue, we'll do it at this time. It is 636. Do we have anyone who wants to address this request? All right, Mr. Dietrich, we'll close the public hearing and go back. It's your turn. My turn. Thank you. Good evening, Carrie Dietrich, um, community planner and assistant director to building and development. So the, um, the property owners, Mr. and Mrs. Hearn, are elderly. They need daily assistance and they'd like to place a manufactured home on their property for their daughter to live in so that she can be there daily. Now, if you look at the zoning map in your packet, all the property around them is zoned R2M. I'm not sure why theirs isn't. There is one lot next to them that is zoned R1. That gentleman called today, Mr. Jackson, and he said that, well, he didn't have time to send me something, but he said to let you know that he was okay with it. Okay. Um, and staff recommends approval. All right. Questions, council? No. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion I to. Have a motion. Thank yeah, you. To second. approve. A second. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Not call for vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. Unanimous. Approved. Item number four, consider approval of resolution 2024-22R, appointing the mayor as the chief executive officer and authorized representative to act in all matters in connection with the Texas Division of Emergency Management Hazard Mitigation Grant Project and committing the city to provide matching funds to secure and complete the TDEM Hazard Mitigation Grant. Kimberly. Yes, sir. Mayor, Council, thank you. Um, this resolution is just coming to fruition for one of the projects we have started about two years ago. And um, Ryan and Candace and um, some other staff, we've all been working together to get all these information uh, to TDEM and we finally are seeing some fruition of the, that planning. So uh, this is just two of the generators that we've applied for and it does have matching funds. We didn't have them in the budget just because we didn't know when it would be coming. So this, if y'all approve it tonight, there would be a future agenda item to uh, support this by $21,000 and some change for our 10% match. And um, there's still some other items out there we're pending, but at this time, this is all that's been brought forward. Okay. Any questions, Council? And just to put it out there, so you have the 10% match, what is the total cost of the generators? So the total cost is 200, let me find it, $213,853 for the, the generators and the pads, all, all the connections and everything. There is a still another matching funds for the um, grant administration portion that's being paid directly from TEDM to the grant administrator that we went through the process to hire. However, these funds, um, would come through us to uh, whoever wins the bid. We're paying for this out of utility reserves. Is that That's a Robbie question. I believe it will be coming from that, but um, again, this will be coming out of next year's budget, so we couldn't bring you the agenda item to transfer funds until October. after October 1, but I believe that's where it's res uh, anticipated from, Robbie. That's okay. For the grant, uh, the 10% match on the grant of 20, uh, one, 21000 and some change. We were anticipating that coming from the utility fund reserves. 
occurred yet. Correct. Other questions? Thank you. If not, do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve agenda item number five. Red. I have a motion. Order four. Second. Sorry. I'll second. I have a motion and second. Any further questions? I will call for vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. Unanimous. Item number five, consider the approval of resolution 2024-23R authorizing Rockport Police Department to take possession of police apprehension and detection K-9 Roscoe from the Lavaca River Ranch and formerly at Sea Drift Police. And he said that they had a, a police canine that they purchased just a couple of years ago. Um, the city of Cedra spent $15,000 for this dual purpose canine. Dual purpose means it's an apprehension dog and a narcotics detection dog. So uh, it's a it's really good dog. Uh, they, sp they sent the dog and the handler at the time to training. They spent another $4,000 on that. And then their handler beat feet, left, left the agency. So since that time, they haven't had anybody uh, be a that they're willing to to give us um, is, a, is a great opportunity for the city of Rockport. These dogs can really help with us in finding illegal narcotics, um, locating people who are running through the woods, hiding in houses, hiding in, in under beds, any, just about anything. So it, it's a great opportunity that, that we have as a city to take this dog. We would send um, our new handler and the dog back to where the dog originally was trained, which is called the Hill Country dog club and that we would pay for that training it's a four-week training for the handler and the dog um, that this that we would be responsible to pay for but that is our goal to do that now the funds to do this for the training we have uh, asset forfeiture funds available and we've also reached out some, to some local charitable organizations uh, who are willing to help with this with the monetary cost of the training and outfitting the vehicle anything that is not covered would be covered through with your funds so it wouldn't affect our budgetary costs. Um, moving forward, the only budgetary cost or and or the food for the for the canine. So it's a good good opportunity for us and uh, we wanted to approach you guys with this. So Council. I have one. Yeah. Um, have we had a canine uh, with the city of Rockport before? I know you've only been here a little while out me too anybody we have this before? Yeah, I, I know at least through Chief Carroll's time, there's not been one. Does, does, it, uh, does it change any of our insurance uh, requirements or anything like that, Vanessa, that you know of? To, uh, probably, I, would, I would expect a little bit, but uh, is there any, any? Little bit, it's not going to be. Okay, so it's not cost prohibitive or, or what have you, so, okay. Can I correct that? I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys did have a canine, because I went through the leadership class, and they showed a canine that was one of the police officers had. So that was about 2000, 2000 in, no, that was 2021? The no, 2017. No, that was the police department. Okay. They did like a training session with him and everything. So the Rancid County Sheriff's Department it was had a canine, okay. uh, GPS located a canine in, in the area, but the Rockwell Police Department was home. Okay, I just want to make sure that was perfect, because I remember a canine. <laughs> I like, remember introducing like, him. I'm sorry if you were done. The, the done vast done. majority cost, we can do it with the forfeiture asset dollars. Okay. So this isn't going to tremendously affect the general budget. It's not going to affect the general budget at all. This is an ongoing dog food. food. Okay. You had an officer that was a dog handler before? We do have an officer that was a handler before, and then we have several other officers that are interested in the project. Sure. So. Uh, we haven't gone through that yet until we finish tonight. So. Good. How do you do the process? 
so we ask for interested officers, which already have names of those, and then there's certain requirements that they're going to that are going to be met. One of them is they have to live a certain distance to where they can respond to the city. They'll be on call basically 24/7, and uh, they have to have a home to where we can build a kennel in their backyard. Um, they have to have a backyard available for that. They can't have HOA uh, restrictions or anything like that for something like this. So um, we've narrowed it down to about three officers at this time. All right. Uh, two questions, Chief. Would, would you just send one, one officer to the, to the county school? Yes, just one officer. It, it's, it's, it's about $7,400 for the dog and the handler for a four-week training. Okay. And then uh, I'm assuming we use a vehicle we already have in possession? A vehicle that we already have in our possession, we'll have to put what's called a, a hot dog. It's basically a, it's an alarm system that you put in a police vehicle in case the vehicle gets too hot, a, an alarm will sound, and then there's also an automatic button to open the back door to let, let the dog out. So we do it with one of our newer cars, so it doesn't go, so this car that we outfit doesn't go away in a year or two? So, um, so yeah, we haven't picked the actual vehicle yet, um, but we do have some grant vehicles that are going to roll into some fleets, so they're okay. fairly low mileage, um, and we're probably going to grab one of those vehicles and outfit that, and also put a cage in the back for the dog. Other questions? I move to approve item five as presented. I have, a motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions? All for vote, Ward 1. Aye. Ward 2. Aye. Ward 3. Aye. Ward 4. Aye. Mayor, aye. She now has a graduation sheet. Item number 6, under other action uh, items and updates, item number 6 is going to be postponed until our next regular meeting. Item number 7, consider the approval of amendment number 2 to the standard professional services agreement with Broadus and Associates regarding the project oversight of new city hall facility for an amount not to exceed $17,000. Ms. Henry. Yes, sir, Mayor and Council, thank you. Um, this is basically the second time we're bringing um, something to you from Broadus, and it is amending them trying to extend this through the length of our project. Um, from the attached documentation, um, you can see that we are slowly spending their funds down, and this is just to continue extending this through the project and hopefully get us to the finish line. It's not it's not their fault that the project is continuing, uh, the time is continuing. And I, I mean, I understand their ask, but to cover their costs for the personnel, I mean, that's, that's just business. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I think the original was September of last year we were looking at. Originally, it was September of 23, September, October of 23, and now we're already into the end of September of 24, and we still have a little bit more to go. Mm -hmm. It, looked, question. it looked like there was still a little bit of room in the budget for... We this. do have sufficient funds in the 24-25 budget to cover this without doing an amendment uh, at this time. Okay. Other questions? Make a motion to approve agenda item number seven. I have a motion. A second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Further question? I will call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. Consider approval of change order for the GLO CDBG dash DR 20 dash 06590 C252 City of Rockport Drainage Improvement. I'm here. Uh, I'm here. You don't look like Mr. Donahoe. You got yeah, uh, I got a little younger. <laughs> he wasn't here tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and present. Uh, okay. What's up? <laughs> so uh, this is a. <laughs> Mayor Council, this is a change order for the GLO drainage project. Um, as we were working out there with Gear Underground, we discovered uh, a section that was not installed. It was never billed, so it was. We needed to dig just to find out the, uh, what was there. So uh, we've been working with Gera and our engineer, and they have given us a bid of. $39,336 uh, to install 
72 linear feet of 30 inch uh, drainage pipe, a 4x4 junction box, a 4x1 riser, and then to complete the asphalt to, to finish up the job. It's right in the middle of the, you know, of the run of the drainage system, so it's kind of a must do to make this thing work. Um, it's kind of where we're at right now. If you have any questions, okay. concerns. Do you, do you have the plans set, or do you have the plans in, in your memory? So that's at Magnolia Market. Um, where, where was the water coming from, from up Hackberry and James, or stuff that was hitting the market? Where was it going uh, if it wasn't tied into this part yet? So it continues down. And jumps over to the other side, the other side of the street, right at uh, Corpus or Church Street, and comes over. So we still have that outfall going. But this was to the whole reason for this project was to split the basin yes, sir. and uh, send water, intercept it, and send it down Hackberry, which is another part of the or Ann Street. So it was just kind of to relieve that that basin. Okay. So we split it. Is what we did. Does this one tie into the outfall at water, or is this turn? This goes. This is this is the middle section to the right outfall to, to Water Street that's already installed. Yeah. Uh, we when the when we went through the tender agreement to the the new contractor, we didn't get any as builts from the from the previous contractor. So we're finding these little sections that are paved over and weren't completed is kind of where we're we're sitting at today. So it's really just the cost of the material. Uh, the work is pretty straightforward for, for Gary Underground. Make a motion to approve agenda item eight as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions? No, we'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It is unanimous. Thank you, Ryan. Item number nine, consider approval of the Heritage District Certificate of Appropriateness <coughs> application submitted for 99 North Austin Street to install an electric marquee sign Rockport Little Theater. Ms. Dietrich. Good evening. Um, we've received a Heritage District application for the marquee sign at the Little Theater. And the reason it's coming to you is because it's not 100% in conformance with the Heritage District code. <clears throat> marquee signs shall be attached to the building or located above or below a canopy only. Well, we, they want to put a monument sign, and staff sees no conflict with that. Electronic signs are allowed in the Heritage District. Can't flash and do fancy things like that. But um, Mr. Hossinger is here tonight to represent the Little Theater if you have any questions. I know they have put this in their packet for the hot funds, right? To have yes, a sign. and they're, they've got to spend them by the end of the month. So they have, that's, I just want to point out, they do have to spend this money to have yes. a sign on it. They put it in their packet. Correct. I just want to make sure I was checked on that. Right. Mr. Hassinger. Hi, I'm Warren Hassinger. Um, live 2517 Turkey Neck Circle, Ward 3. Um, here to answer any questions. I think we gave you the entire packet. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you have any questions, in, in the packet, the placement the location of the sign is just going in the, approximately the same place as the existing sign is, right? And, yes. And uh, well inside the sidewalk, well inside the uh, property line. Um, there's not a whole lot of leeway. No, sir. So it would have to go in there. In fact, that billboard sign that's there uh, and, and would need to come down. To conform with the Heritage District. Uh, it would have to be on the building, is that, and that would be very difficult to see the front of the Rockport Little Theater from. It sits so far back. Yeah, because it yeah. sits so far and back. And given so. the width of the lot. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The, the yeah. building itself. Yeah. So, I, I see no problem with it. Questions? I'll make a motion to approve agenda item number nine as presented. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Not, we'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It is unanimous. Senate approval to authorize the mayor to approve and sign the interlocal agreement with Texas Municipal League Intergovernmental Risk Pool 
to provide cyber liability and data breach response coverage with the core coverage option. Kimberly. Yes, uh, Casey couldn't be here tonight, so we're trying to help her here. But the um, this is um, in prior years you didn't have this as much, but uh, over the years this has come more prevalent to have to have cybersecurity insurance. Um, in your packet, the two options that have been provided by TML IRP, one has a $500,000 coverage and one is a million dollar coverage. The difference is the difference of about $250. Um, we see this as uh, a good thing and I'm not, sorry, our, uh, Bob here from IT department and Casey have had that discussion and they felt that the higher increment was the better increment to go with for a total of $1,250. Okay. And that's annual. Questions, Council? I move to approve item 10 to present. I have a motion and a second. Are there questions? Not, we will call for a vote. Ward 1. Aye. Ward 2. Aye. Ward 3. Aye. Ward 4. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. Item number 11 received a presentation of the Texas Maritime Museum Expansion Project. Okay. With the use of the use of the auditorium, so many things. In fact, in our our winter season, we have lecture series and standing room only, which this would just come in handy. We have the maritime ball coming up in December. That will be perfect for that. We have the Patreon party, which could be used. The list is endless. But the fact is, is that. This is not just a one floor building. This is actually, okay. We actually have a two story facility. This is actually an aerial view of the facility. If you zoom in, next slide, there you go. You can actually see the mezzanine over the entrance, over the dead space. That is the mezzanine, so that way you're able to actually see Tortuga from a variety of different perspectives. Down that hallway, you notice that there's an, actually an elevator that's gonna be roughly about 10 by 10, a curatorial space, and all the administration area. But it's not just the functional museum. It's the look, it's the aesthetics. The fact is, is that what we're trying to do is create an environment that People see and they're wanting to, they're essentially drawn to. 
you'll notice a couple of interesting features that we have. One of them is the peak with the several windows up on top, which will allow the natural lighting to come in. That will illuminate our exhibits. The thing is, is that with museums and lighting, you have to make sure that it's properly set so that way the natural lighting doesn't affect artifacts. In the screen over on the far left side of the facility, you'll notice that it's kind of white out. That's actually a niche. So that way people can actually, our guests can go sit down inside and enjoy the beach view. The other one is that you can notice at the very front as the entrance, people can actually peer inside. So that way they can uh, get a glance before they actually walk inside. We want them to be sighted even before they actually step in, into the museum. But the courtyard is just as beautiful. You'll notice that we actually developed another niche. That way somebody could sit down, enjoy the view of the harbor. The use of slat windows will allow the directed lighting so that way we provide natural lighting into the museum, but only as long as it doesn't affect the artifacts. The fact is, is that the plan itself is actually going to be broken down into three elements, three major elements. The first phase, which is essentially the whole of the museum, the exhibit area, as well as the discovery center, and the uh, floor, the second floor. The second phase being the education rooms, and the third being the auditorium. The overall size of this facility is 25,740 square foot overall. Phase one alone is 19,900. Phase two, it's just a hair over 2,000 square foot, and phase three being just a, a shy of 4,000. If you can read that, everybody wonders about this. How much it will cost? Well, it's just a hair shy of $13.8 million. But the fact is, is that in order to create the experience, and I want to say that this is not a fit and finish. It's not a fit and finish project. This is just the building. But that's the reason why we're looking at doing this in phases. I want this to be a very informative session so that way you know what we're trying to do, what we're working on. The fact is, is that, uh, and I wrote this down earlier today, this expansion represents our commitment to providing necessary experiences that will inspire and educate our community and throughout our state. As we like to say inside the museum, this is our, actually our value statement. No matter the headwinds, excellence is our heading and we will maintain our heading to change lives. Tom, do you have anything else? Yeah, I'd like to point out that this is not an entirely new idea. If you've noticed, the building uh, the museum uh, is in stands there by itself on a very large piece of property. We have an assortment of drawings over there for the original conceptual layout that had that entire site being developed. Uh, the concept plan we have now uh, modernizes that. It's not quite as ambitious. It doesn't have a, a boat basin in the middle of it and a few other things. But it's been considered from the beginning. The museum just turned 35 years old in July. Uh, one of the key uh, elements is that in the 70th legislature of Texas uh, designated the Maritime Museum as the official Maritime Museum of the state. Uh, and last year, uh, the last session, uh, we actually asked for and received some funding uh, from the Texas legislature. And we're asking for funding again to continue uh, renovations, uh, a lot of things that haven't been addressed in 35 years. Uh, as Michael pointed out, the building itself comes in a little under $14 million. Uh, the total project in the, in the long term we expect to be uh, on the neighborhood of $20 million. So we have quite a, a fundraising uh, project ahead of us because everything that we do at the museum is done with grants and, and donations. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask Tom or I. And, and if you have any questions after the fact, don't hesitate to just call the, the, the museum. Questions, Council?
I have one. Yes, I sir. want to make sure I, I heard you. You said that our museum was designated by the state as the the, hey. the official the official maritime museum of the state of Texas. Right. By a joint resolution of uh, both houses uh, of the legislature, uh, actually before the museum was built, if you yes, read sir. the proclamations, uh, they say the proposed Texas Maritime Museum. Uh, but we are the official maritime museum of the state of Texas. That's impressive. I didn't know that. It's a good piece of information. Absolutely. Anyone else? Do we have a, a time frame, or is this all funding <coughs> based on funding? We're, well, that is true. Yes, it, it is based on funding. Uh, however, we anticipate uh, a movement uh, in terms of groundbreaking, and uh, as long as everything lines itself up, you know how that goes. Yeah. Um, but we anticipate two years. Do you anticipate being asked for the city? No. If you're willing to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come to the budget uh, workshops at Rural Park. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do my job if I didn't ask. <laughs> We'd love to have you all uh, sign up as members of uh, the museum. We've uh, revitalized the membership program. So we'd be glad to have you join us. Great. Well, again, thank you so much. and I. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. We try to apologize for the inconvenience with the. Well, thank you very much. We thank look forward you. to seeing it. It's a great asset for our community. Thank you. I'm number 12. Receive presentation, provide directions regarding the Rockport Citizens University. That's a good one. I'll start. So, as you remember, during my interview, I had y'all had asked me some different questions about how to get citizen input, citizen in, um, engagement, and this was one of them that I had spoken to you about that I did in my previous city. And so, um, I had talked to y'all during the budget process that I would like to bring it forward for Rockport and. Um, it helps with building a stronger connection through civic engagement. Um, I'll send y'all this presentation, but there's, um, it's a new way to provide engagement. It's a unique opportunity for residents to learn how cities operate or our city operates. It's gain behind, they'll be able to gain behind the scenes of how processes work, how budgets, work and how the city functions. That's the wrong one. Oh. Um, and it develops a deeper understanding for local governments. And why it matters, it helps with the strength of relationship between city officials and the residents. It empowers citizens to understand and contribute, positive contributes um, with decision making. It provides a platform for citizens to input city priorities um, and how a, a city budget works. It will also give you insight on public safety operations and as well as like public works and some of the other departments. Um, I'm here. It gives behind the scenes of city departments and their daily operations. Um, let's see, the program scheduling. So it would be once a month for 10 months. Every department would have a different month. It would be, I think I put it the third Thursday of the month, and it would start, ooh, I think I said 6.30. And then, um, so what that would be, it would be about an hour, hour and a half, and we, in your packet, you saw a breakdown of every single meeting and who's going to present. We still have to make a few corrections within that um, program because things are changing here at City Recording Hall. Recording in progress. And it includes field trips, hands-on activities. Each session will be hosted by a city, different city department. And why I'm lost. Uh, 
Okay. Um, anyone who's interested in, in the local government, who should sign up? Anyone who's interested in local government must be a resident of the city of Rockport. And again, that's your decision if you want. That's just how I've done it before. Limited space. We're saying 15 to 20 residents. Um, that way it's a manageable class. It's easier to talk, um, talk to. Um, and then we're asking everybody to apply early. The mutual benefits would be you would gain insight of what residents, you know, are looking at wants, needs, priorities. Um, you would get, um, gain a better way of communicating back and forth. Um, it really, what I saw in the previous city I did is some of the people that, it, it was a better understanding of how the city functioned. They were more appreciative of all the hard work we put into everything and more supportive. Um, and how to join, you can fill out the application on the city website once y'all give me the go-ahead. I'm um, trying to open it October the 1st, and, and it helps build a stronger community together. So I've just given some other information about how to reach me or how to email me. So in your packet, you did see there's a press release that I included, the application I included, and then a simple breakdown for what each department will basically go over. It's a, um, it's a really good learning opportunity. I feel it, um, it opens the communications up more. And again, like I said, it gives more of appreciation of what the city does. Questions? Shelly, how uh, were you planning? I'm probably going to put this on the city website. We're going to maybe put a ad in the paper with maybe a yeah. copy of the application or something like that to stir up interest. What, what's will. been successful in the past when you've tried this? Um, so any opportunity I got to speak about it, any opportunity anybody else within the city got to speak about it, we all talked about it. It was just we did a citywide kind of marketing kind of campaign. Um, we, civic groups, we put the information out there. We notified anyone who would listen to us. Um, and then, again, our council members also helped, you know, promote this. You, um, some of our council members went directly to certain citizens. So what we did was we had 45 people sign up for the first time, and we literally put in cans all the females, all the males, and we drew 10 out of each and um, to make a well-balanced class. And we, um, it's still very successful. Well, I've participated in these in a previous life, and uh, it, they, they do work out real well. It gives citizens that may not have the all the knowledge of what, how, how, how the city operates. Right. It gives them the, the a realistic uh, breakdown, um, starting at the budgets and, and you know the whole thing, uh, seeing how each department works and what the streets guys do, and what, what, the, what the cops do, how parks work. You know, how, at the end, how everybody works together. And, and uh, I, th I think it's a great, great opportunity for, for the, the community to learn actually how the city functions. On a selfish note, it did help that some of the residents who called me for everything then found out really who did it, so they called that department instead. <laughs> so that was the nice part. Uh, two, two questions. Uh, uh, funding, how, uh, did we put that in the budget? For you did. Okay. You give um, $5,000 towards it. But at this time, it wouldn't be we aren't going to feed them there wouldn't really be anything more than snacks or drinks. Um, well, then I'm out. <laughs> well, you can still, well, I hope you don't. Know. <laughs> but um, what, what you can do is each council member decide to come and attend some of these meetings. If I have a quorum, I'll need to post a notice of quorum. But it is good for 
the citizens who sign up to also meet y'all. The very first class starts off with the city manager and city council. The one thing that we also tried to do, and it's not, it doesn't work out in, on all the sessions, you know, if you have an outdoor session or something like that, mm -hmm. was also to try to, to do some of the social media and, and, and recording of it and, and YouTubing it, I guess YouTube, so that uh, you can just add that to the website and well, say, hey, this is. No, 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 no. The, the people, the, the participants are there, but then maybe those that are unable or. Right. What I did before was I invited them through team. If they, one lady was in France and mm -hmm. she watched, so she attended. So that, I gave that opportunity just to those if they were not able to attend and they really wanted to. I know it, it's not, it's probably not easy to do the whole thing. So I mean, I, I know when we would, when they came to the fire station, they were, you know, all over the fire truck, we were doing demonstrations and, and they went over to the, the PD, some of those things that you just couldn't really video. Uh, so what I'd like to do is kind of do video, short clips of each one, very short, and we use it next year as the promoting for the next uh -huh. class. Yeah, I like the idea of participation, direct. I mean, just like with the leadership class, the whole idea behind that and the reason it works so well in the camaraderie that's built with the people that attend is because it is in person, it's interactive. And I think that is important to maintain that integrity with this education program. I like the idea of that information being freely available. But if this becomes something that people truly are very interested in, you know, what we could do to help accommodate more people being able to attend each session, I'd rather do that to get these people to interact within this, you know, go on these program trips and meet the people <coughs> working, meet the staff, and really engage within the program. I do know that we have talked between department heads and this, um, about maybe offering it for um, employees as well, so that everybody knows what each other does. It gives a better appreciation. Anyone else? I think it's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We appreciate it. Item number 13 received a presentation on the new agenda management, civic engagement, and citizen participation. Okay. Good <laughs> this is so exciting to me. Um, <laughs> The City of Rockport is going to streamline our agenda meeting management process, which will benefit city staff, the council, and the public. So I hope I see smiling faces. <laughs> We've been through a lot of training for this, so some of us are really excited about it. So the benefits for city staff is it's an automatic agenda meet, um, minutes and live streaming management process. Um, it provides team solutions, so we will all work together a little, you know, a little bit more. It also makes sure because you can't post less than, you know, less than 72 hours, so we're going to ensure that all of our meetings is in compliance with the Open Meetings Act. There's going to be one location on the city website and on the behind the scenes in the system for agenda, live streaming of meetings, minutes, and additional attachments. And one of those additional attachments will be your citizen comments. When everybody signs up, we can upload those to the a packet as well. Um, and so all this will be for all meetings, boards and commissions, um, anything. If I have to post a notice of quorum, the notice of quorum will go there. So it'll look a lot different on our website, and I'll show you that. It is more um, efficient and cost savings. And I think the other day I figured out just my time just to put together city council meetings. You, um, we've already, we're going to save money just on my time. That does not include Vanessa's time or anyone else within the city that works in it or boards and commissions. So we've already paid for it. 
by the time it's going that I'm going to save on me. Um, so the board view for and members and council members, there will be there's a board view just for y'all and department heads as well, and there will be no more Dropbox. So it's going to be much easier and simpler. Um, the benefits to the public will be again the one location. The searching for documents, searching for past meetings, comp, those kind of information will be so much easier for the public. It, um, all the meetings will be in one location. It's more cost effective. Um, watching past meetings on the video um, on demand as well as closed captioning. And it's going to assist with the education and again, transparency. And so what it's going to look like. So you're going to get on the website. And I'm, so, I'm using my old city, and I asked for permission. And they said, OK. So you get, on your, oh, you get on the website. You click on the red flip-flop, which is the agenda, um, the agenda and minutes. And so it's going to take you to a page that looks like this. And it'll just list all of the meetings, regardless of what kind of meeting it is. So then what happens, you will be able to use several different ways to find what you're looking for. You can go at the top by the category and click in city council only or planning and zoning, whatever it is you want. Or you can type it in the search bar. Or on the left side, you can use the meeting and the dates. Or you can just scroll down where the green blocks are. It is, it's very, very user friendly. Now, how to find the meeting items. So some of these are hidden, but you'll see um, the very first one that has a little camera, that's going to be your video. So if you are going after the meeting, you can click on the video. It'll bring up the agenda along with the meeting. If you do not want to um, watch the whole meeting again and you just want number, say item number 12, you click on the item number 12 and it's going to take you straight there. So, and then the next one, it looks like a magnifying or a magnaphone. That is actually the agenda posting information. And then the next one next to it is all your drop downs. So when minutes are there, the drop down will show when, um, your comments are there. There will be a drop down for that too. So everything is right up front for everyone. So my recommendation to the public and to anyone else is y'all, they might have signed up for Notify Me. They're going to try to transfer those over. They cannot guarantee that. So my recommendation is for everyone at the top right corner to click on and resubscribe. So you will automatically be notified of whatever it is you want to see. And then if you want to watch live, wherever a meeting is, if it's going on at that time, it'll have a note saying live meeting. You click on that and you can watch live. We will not be doing this on YouTube anymore. So it'll be one place. So again, we'll save money there. Um, the citizens to be heard is something else that we were um, would like to get your permission to change. We now use a product called um, Seamless Docs, and there's been sometimes some issues. There's a Seamless Docs for council meetings and the Seamless Docs for boards and commission, and sometimes people click on the wrong ones. They don't make it to council or they don't make it to board and commission, so we would like to do away with that and use a product that we already have that we can, again, save money on. Um, so they, it would be on the website. There would be the form, and you would just fill in the form. It's extremely easier. Actually, it's easier than seamless docs. And so we would automatically be able to save those according to the State Library of Archives retention period. And then the comments will be added, like I said earlier, on the Dropbox after the meeting. And so the, the form will actually sim be simplified for the public. 
and for anyone else who gets the forms, because I will have a back-end way to go in and check to make sure I have everyone. It will provide a list for me as well as the comments. Um, the notes, we would like to put on the new form a note stating that the comments will not be read, but would be uploaded to the agenda meeting and distributed to the city council. And all comments will be retained according to the State Library of Archive retention schedule. And um, we also want to let people know that these comments are public records. A lot of times you will get those and you see I redact an email address. Private emails are not um, public, however, they are on um, things that like, for instance, your citizen comment form. But a lot of people don't know that, and I don't like to release that until I let them know. So with that statement, we would be letting them know. So if it's okay with y'all, if I could change that form, that's one direction I need to simplify it and to clean it up. And I think, Mayor, I showed it to you already. I'm sorry I didn't include a packet in the packet. But some upcoming dates. So Thursday will be our final meeting with Civic Clerk. Tuesday, we're going to go live. And so you'll start to see on the website these different changes. So the very first meeting, kind of our guinea pig, We'll be planning and zoning meeting. Yes. And, we're <laughs> and so you'll be able to, from your phone, if you would like, to watch it live as well. Um, and then. <laughs> no way. There, and then I need to have a one on one training with each of you who want to use, who are going to use your laptops, um, that you'll love the board view so much more. It'll. Um, provide so much more for y'all than it would through your Dropbox or through email. So those are just some changes coming. I know a lot of the meetings that we have now at the commission, the boards are not recording um, our live stream. So are those now going to be all done that way or just how's that going to work? I know some people would like to watch some of those meetings as well. Um, you now have that opportunity. It's all set up for all of them. If that's what the direction is, I guess it would be. I mean, do we, do we, I mean, I, I think they should, I mean, I did, that's how it should be set up. If people have an interest and they, I mean, most of our boards, they don't meet maybe every couple months. So, so all the boards that don't get to meet here? Well, the, the okay. board, um, yeah. Okay. I think all the ones that do meet here, we will, we will handle that. Yes, the ones that meet here. Okay. I think so that's it's very, very important easy. to know. Yeah, it's very easy to do. You just set it up for to start. <coughs> it doesn't start. We'll show them a button to push so it does start. And then you can go back and time stamp it even after the meeting. So it's not like Bob would have to be here. Okay. Hopefully this may get easier for us in the next, in our new building. The, the uh, IT issues for Bob. Yes. No one else. <laughs> I think it's good. Great. Thank you, Shelly. Thank Appreciate you, Appreciate your hard work on it. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Thank you. It was a team effort. I'm just glad P&Z gets it first so we can, we can uh, I, I also want to when it just goes dark. <laughs> one more thing I think I skipped over is right now you have the QR code on the agendas. That will go away. And then the simple click, it, it's, it's going to be much easier and more transparent. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. Next time on the agenda is city manager report. flip through it at your own leisure. There's a couple of things I would like to point out. There we go. Um, we do have our new developments that are coming in listed here. Those, of course, will be updated once a month. Um, you can look at those, and if you have any questions, certainly reach out to Carrie or myself, and we'll be able to uh, help you with that. 
there is a considerable amount of data in graph form. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Um, you can look through those permits, inspections, fees, um, water and sewer wastewater connections. I believe you all received the financials via your email earlier this week. So these are the same things. So I'm really selfishly going to go to a couple of last things. The engineering report that Anthony Allen usually comes and gives us, we're going to just include that in here. So you can go through that at your own pace as well and uh, formulate your questions as you need to. Again, here's the utility report. Sorry, I'm not trying to rush through this. I just know we got a quick meeting. Stephanie's already got her purse out, so. Um. <laughs> Parks and Recreation has several upcoming events. Be sure and take a look at those. We're trying to do a lot better job of pushing out information. So if you've noticed our Facebook page, our website, it's looking a little more um, spiffy these days. Um, so ev that's a joint effort um, from all of this team. Everybody's committed to putting out information better, and I think we're doing a, a much better job of it. Not to say that we're already there, but we're working on it. Um, some of the things I really want to point out is we received a notice of violation for stormwater discharge from the navigation district. Um, we'll be talking about that in executive session in our path forward. We potentially are going to file suit on merchants for latent defects in the GLO drainage projects. We'll also be discussing that in executive session. And that's part of the project that Ryan just talked to you about. Internally, we're working on leveling up our customer service. Um, that's going to be kind of our, our big overarching goal for this year is um, remembering what we're working for and um, making it the best that we can be. One thing that I'm really proud of is last year you guys um, funded a program called Every Dollar. It cost us $7,000 for the entire city to have the availability to Every Dollar. Right now we have 24% participation, so that would be about 30-ish employees. I don't do big math. But um, in one year, October to October, we've paid off as a staff $450,000 in debt. That is not a typo. That is basically those 30-ish people busting their butts. So we didn't give a raise last year, but we hope we gave a lifestyle change to some of them. We're going to continue to that this coming year. Like I said, it's probably a pretty good investment in our employees at $7,000. Um, so... If y'all have questions about that, I would love you. I would love to discuss it. Um, and then we're working on scheduling a leadership retreat. We're going to set out our goals, mission, values, and things um, of that nature for this year. So, any questions there? Okay. Um, upcoming agenda: social media policy. We have one that is in our. Um, Employee handbook for employees personal use of their social media. We don't have a social media policy for our own page for the city's page So um, Shelly's helping formulate that we think it's gonna be real important. I made a big boo-boo on the Facebook page and there was a Posting we had that had a wrong uh, Decimal point and so I just pulled it down. Well Shelly yelled at me really loudly because she's like that and said you can't do that Vanessa and so um, we're going to roll out a policy so Vanessa and others don't make that mistake. Um, city's record management plan, wow. We have a lot of stuff to get rid of, shred, and get in order. Um, we're going to do that. That, again, is Shelly uh, pushing us into a new era that's going to be exciting. With that, prior to our move to City Hall, we're going to have um, a day that employees have to take home, employees that are moving to City Hall, have to take home all of their personal items from this building. And then right after that, we're going to have a clean day. We're going to shut down City Hall for half a day unless I hear major objections from you. And everybody's going to clean out their files, clean out their offices. We're going to call in a shredding truck. The guys out in the back are going to clean their trucks. We're going to just get this place spick and span. It's not going to be a spring cleaning. It's going to be a fall cleaning. Um, but we, we want to get everything... <coughs> We have a mass amount of paper that we don't need. And there's never going to be a good time just to stop and get rid of it. So um, we're going to just make the time. And 
we're not going to move crap that we don't need over to the new place. So um, you'll see that coming up. Is there a date? November? What date are we closing? Half a day? Yeah. November 15th. No, no. It's all right. It's a Friday in November. You'll see it coming out. We'll advertise it really well so there's not any surprises that we're not open. Everybody will still be here milling around. If some catastrophe comes up, we'll be here. We're not going off on a play date for the day. So um, look for that. If you want to come help clean, I'm sure we'll have a job for you. Coming up, we need to do the Major's uh, Liaison Committee appointments. Um, I don't think we have even that out since we had a new council member. And so I'm sure y'all want to dump your share on him. Convention and Bureau, Visitors Bureau uh, Board, we've talked about that a couple of times. We're waiting to get, I guess, some more applications in on that one. No? Haven't got many? Okay. Any new ones? Okay. So we'll put that up there. We'll uh, maybe do one more push to get some more people on there. Um, and then we'll appoint the Tourist Zone Board of Directors. That um, we have a lot of applications for. So the thing you will see before we do that is I'm going to tighten that board down a little bit. Um, there's a couple of things that I think need to be addressed. One is the type of people and the type of knowledge you need to have to be on that board. Um, one of the big concerns is that basically that board can pay themselves anything, vote themselves any pay. So I'm going to bring a proposal in um, to what they can be paid. And we'll um, adopt a resolution to that end so that that concern is addressed and it puts a control on, on the board. So, any questions there? Nope. Upcoming events. We're having an STR town hall. Zoom meeting, October 1st. That is the rollout of the software. Anybody and everybody can join the Zoom, get on, ask their questions, and learn how to register their STR. We're super excited about that, right? Yes. Okay. National Night Out, Chief, you got great things planned? We do. Um, we'll have a bunch of vehicles out there. I think there'll be some city vehicles out there with hot dogs and popcorn. Um, some games. We're going to give away a couple of kids' bicycles to some children out there that were left over from food stand last year. And we plan on having a good time. Perfect. It'll be great. Seafair. Um, Doggy dunk, there's a big dog dunk and a little dog dunk, so figure out which one your dog falls in and go let them swim at the pool. The pool is currently closed, though, for maintenance. Starting the 30th. Starting the 30th, and we have um, we got to do some cleaning that we can't do with people in there. Um, drive through tree giveaway, October 11th. We get less trees than we had last year because more cities want to play. So if you want a tree, get in line early. Well, not too early, but get in line. Um, and then fall festival. You want to tell us something about that, Brittany? We've got a lot of kids activities, a lot of organizations that are going to be there offering some um, good advice, some good information, as well as a game for the kids. We have hay rides, pumpkin patch, uh, kids' tie-dye shirts. I mean, it's a whole lot of fun, so come out um, from 5.30 to 8.30. Okay. Any questions on upcoming events? All right, I'll let you go. All right. I managed to skip item number 13.1 because I never had a 13.1 before that I recall. Uh, discussion on Chapter 6.50 of the City of Rockport Code of Ordinances and provide directions to the staff. Mr. Brundrick. Mayor, thank you, sir. Uh, a citizen business owner came to me uh, in having issues with uh, code enforcement. This is nothing to do with uh, code enforcement at all. It's not a complaint against them. They're, they're following our code of ordinances. But what this business is doing is flying the, the Rockport Fulton pirate flag uh, from a tethered balloon. Uh, so that, that's his flagpole. It's got all the balloon with string. And that's the flag. And he's flying it on game days, uh, a home game for the uh, high school. And uh, he is uh, going to be cited in the future, uh, I assume, if, if he continues to do that, because it's in our code of ordinances. And I just wanted to, I, when I went back and looked at our code of ordinances, I was like, is this really something that that we should concern ourselves with, that we're flying a, a flag from a 
tethered balloon. And it's, a, it's an ordinance from 94, from back in 1994. So I don't really know what, what we were doing in 94 since that was an issue. I was in, you know, freshman in high school. But, um, You're probably the only one that It could be, it could have been me. I could have been having something flying from a balloon. But uh, we're not going back there. Uh, statute of limitations, but thank you. So I, anyway, I just wanted to, to bring that up and, and just gauge y'all's, I don't know what y'all's thoughts are on, on flying a flag from a string in a tethered balloon. If that's something that we should be citing our local businesses. I think you just have to be really careful that it, they don't start treating it as an American flag. So you have to be specific that if it's a flat, like a logo. Well, that's also affiliated. covered. It is covered in the ordinance. That it's very clear. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, so they don't improperly fly fly an American flag. That's the only concern. I think you have to be very careful on the wording. I'm open minded. I don't think it's any different than flying advertising banners and things like that. Um, what they are truly doing is flying advertising for the school yeah. and the children that attend during sponsor or not sponsored but uh, events such as. Games and things and like that. that. That is exempt. So, uh, another part of that in the ordinance, uh, further up in the ordinance, those would be the exempt since it's a school related activity. The issue is the way that it's, it's, it's a tethered it. balloon. So, specifically not tethered to a balloon. That, is it imposing any safety risk? That, it's not, not in the FAA. Yeah, it's, it's not in the FAA, FAA flight pattern, not, on, not by the airport. Um, so to me, it was just like a, it was an issue. Is it becoming, would it become a bigger issue if we were to make consideration for that change? Do you? If, if they fly the, the political flag, are y'all going to hear about it? That, that involves freedom of speech, though. Yeah, so what are you, what are you going to, what are the parameters? Have we gotten any complaints on this? <coughs> yeah. Right. Uh, just from the business owner. So it was, that was flying the flag. Yeah, the, he's complaining about the ordinance, but no, no one's complaining about what he's doing. I, and I don't know how uh, codes. Maybe they were driving, saw it, and they're like, hmm, whatever. I remember reading somewhere that I can't fly from the blue. I don't know. I, I, I don't think know. we've it's had the, con the discussion oh, numerous times. Yes, the co I mean, and the, again, this is nothing against uh, codes or uh, code enforcement or, or PD or anything. You know, they they've got this list of codes that we or co our code of ordinances, and there is a violation. All right, so code enforcement noticed it is outside of the ordinance, but we have not received any complaints. We have not received complaints about the flag. Of that flag. I think one of the concerns was the height that it was flying, the additional two pounds of the balloon that it would fall across the hall. But, mm -hmm. but I think you I think that in the past, and I can, I was around in 1994. Um, I, I vaguely remember this. I was the police chief and didn't care a whole lot. But, but when we have gone through sign ordinances and, and those things before, the question has come up, if, it, whether it's a problem with one person has a balloon up with a flag on it is kind of irrelevant. If, if everybody on the street put one up there, it's a problem. And we had enough signage in town <clears throat> at one time or other. Uh, there were people planning on putting them up billboards, and you can't put a new billboard in town as of probably 1994. Um, but the issue was how many of them are too much. And if, if there's no restriction on it at all, and we take it out of the ordinance, do you want everybody up and down the street to have a balloon up there with, with some sort of flag flying from it? And, the discussion at the time, I don't remember it talking about things with balloons, but in signs in general and where you can put them and so forth, the issue was if one can do it and everybody does, is it a problem? And yes, it could be a problem. So that's where it came from. And, and again, I don't remember that one specifically, but I do remember countless times we had sign ordinance questions. And that's what it was about. It, 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 if one person can do it, then everybody up and down the street do it. You know, can you do one for your university? You know, I would like to have a great big University of Texas flag flying out in front of my house from something out there because they're doing right well this year. I'd like to point that out for those of you. Um, and 
when is it not okay anymore? How many people have to do it for it's a problem? And well, the chief makes a Just because I, it seems like you recently and thoroughly reviewed this ordinance, is it restrictive to a flat pole? No. Like, do we? You can do a flat pole. It, the the 6.5, this part, it just says tethered balloon. So is there a potential that he could change the method in which he flew the flag? And then it would be within the ordinance? Because it is? Particularly in where he is doing this, a safety issue because of the balloon, because of the method in which he is. That's really what it is. It's the concern of safety. No, I can tell you that the height of the maybe the height of the balloon being the concern of the balloon deflates or pops and it falls off, uh, goes across power lines. Um, in that that section, it says inflatable signs and tethered balloons. So we're in violation anytime you see one of those inflatable signs. That's that's in our ordinance that we can't have those. And we see those. I, I know recently where the when the uh, convenience stores open and they've got the the slurp of your the drink mm -hmm. you know, cup and it's like the inflatable gorilla. Yeah. Right, it's gone. No, I, I know, but I mean it happens. I mean, you know, anytime there's a new opening. Uh, I would I would like to just see like again you want direction here. If the citizen has an issue with this ordinance and some sort of safe conduct, I would like to have at least photos and some input from the police department, from Cary, maybe do some research of what would be safe, what would not alternative. be safe, alter mm -hmm. alternate, like, and have, and mm -hmm. like, where they're here, they can present it to us, so we're seeing what is actually happening. I think there's too many questions here, so obviously, to get that. But I did tell Brad, yeah. that I didn't have time to do the research. If you want to come and present it, I wouldn't have all kinds of things like that. But if you want to go forward and analyze this particular one, give us until October when we can have, you know, can have a lot of data and alternatives. But we just didn't have time. I think a high restriction uh, would probably be maybe the most prudent thing. Is it, it, yes, you can probably still do it for a tethered balloon, but you can't have it 300 feet in the air or, or whatever. How, how high up is this thing? I have no idea. Is it, is it pretty high or is it, is it 20 feet off the ground? That's, uh, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. We don't really have the information. So if we can pick about, that, then maybe it makes it more. It was about 50 feet up. Okay, so yeah, this is. The, the concerns were it's over power lines, but if the wind was blowing to the south, then it would be across Market Street. So there's some concerns, and with the ordinance in place, the the, um, the uh, coast department informed him, and then and then I believe they sent him a letter after that. Well, can we just let's do the research? Let's have the citizen here who has the you know the reasoning to come in front of us. Let's have the conversation. Have alternatives. You know, we can go over it. If it's something that's not going to work for us, it doesn't work for us. But I think we definitely need more information. And I think we need photos, maybe how high, what's going to be safe, what's not going to be safe. Um, I just think there's too much out there in the air right now for anything to move forward without any of that kind of information. So that's what I would, I would like to move direction on staff. I would support that, yeah. And I would encourage your code enforcement people to go ahead with what they're doing. If they see what they believe to be a violation, they can issue a warning or a citation or whatever they need to do. Because, again, we don't need to try to tell them, you go interpret the thing and figure out what to enforce and what not to enforce. If it's a violation and it doesn't need to be, we need to do something about that. But they don't need to be worried about that. Just, just so you know, I recommend that they get an officer and issue a citation and not go through the letter paperwork, but they went with the letter so, which is fine. I mean, that's the route we're going to take. Is that, that, I guess that's a class C, mis is it a, just a class C uh, ordinance violation? Ordinance. So, a municipal court violation. And, and, the and the business owner brought the balloon down initially and then he said, no, I'm not going to follow that and put it back up. So, so I think we need compliance. And that's what we want. Voluntary compliance is always, and then we can discuss this. 
Anything else on that subject? We are going to go into executive session. Item number 15, seek the advice of attorney about pending or contemplated litigation or settlement offer. You know, a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this city council. And these are... City Hall Construction, Concho Street Construction, General Land Office Drainage Projects, Ranges County Navigation District Notice of Violation. It is 754 and we're in executive session.
the recording stuff on. It is 8 46, and we are back in regular session. So I just make the motion. I just make a motion for the mayor to execute a, res a resolution of the City Council of the City of Rockport, Texas, authorizing filing suit against Merchants Bonding Company for damages caused by Burnside Services Incorporated and authorizing a city attorney to represent the City of Rockport, Texas in the lawsuit. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions? We'll call for a vote. Ward 1. Aye. Ward 2. Aye. Ward 3. Aye. Ward 4. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Done. I'm waiting on it.